Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. Don't double check your settings, don't double check the channel. It is JJ, I'm back here uh, just for a quick little opportunity to be able to give you guys some insight into our brand new ASUS ROG GTX Poseidon graphics card. A lot of you guys have been asking questions about this card, what it's really all about, how it works, you know, what's the difference between air and what's the difference between water and we've decided to give you guys a quick primer here to be able to go ahead and showcase you the benefits of not only how cool the card is uh, when it's running under the native air cooling solution but also actually how it performs if we go ahead and simply integrate it into a water cooling setup so within this video we're going to be talking to you a little bit about how simple it is to be able to integrate into a water cooling system as well as guys giving you a little bit of perspective at how it stacks up temperature wise when running under air as well as when running under water so with that let's go ahead and jump straight into seeing what performance looks like when the card is running under the native air cooling solution Okay guys, so in regards to the overall temperature performance that we have with our Poseidon when it's running its native uh, direct CU2 air cooling solution, we've got some pretty strong performance. Now if you take into consideration that the reference design is usually averaging somewhere between about uh, 82 to about 84C under full gaming load, this car is not only going to be quieter, but it's actually going to be quite a bit cooler, usually averaging somewhere between about 73 to about 75C under full gaming load. So that's going to be quite a bit of a reduction, but if you go ahead and reference the fact that of course you can see here we've got these high performance heat pipes which are working in conjunction with the vapor chamber which is making direct contact with the GPU you can also see the G14 thread connections for our water cooling solution which is what we're going to be taking a look at next if we go ahead and simply integrate this into a water cooling loop what's the type of performance expectation we can have now one important thing that we want to go ahead and preface also here is that under both situations the card is going to be running at such a cooler speed compared to the reference that that GPU boost 2.0 clock technology is going to be consistently pegged at running at a much higher clock speed so all the way around, whether it's going to be under air or whether it's going to be water, we're not only getting cooler and quieter operation, but we're also getting much faster performance from our GPU. So let's go ahead and take a look at water cooling. Okay guys, so now we're going to go ahead and show you a little bit more about actually how water cooling works on the actual Poseidon graphics card. So before we actually demonstrate for you and show you actually what are some of the performance benefits for the actual Poseidon when actually running under full gaming load, I want to actually give you a little bit of perspective of how simple it is to be able to take advantage of the water cooling itself. So, so you can see right here, I've actually got an ASUS ROG GTX 780 Poseidon graphics card. And as we noted, of course, it fully integrates not only a full air cooling solution, but also a water cooling solution. With the water cooling solution right here at the top, you've got two G14 uh, thread connections, uh, which are very easy to be able to work with. It's as simple as just essentially uh, taking off the cap and once we go ahead and remove that, we then can go ahead and utilize any number of different types of fittings uh, to make our connection to our active water cooling system. So of course right here, I've got something as uh, common as a standard barb, which might be easier to work with, but you would have to utilize some form of a clamp to be able to go ahead and get it uh, connected. Uh, or of course, you've got your classic compression fittings, which uh, tend to have a lot more variance and different types of uh, look and feel. As you can see this one, it's got a nice uh, actually uh, metallic banding. And it's actually got a carbon fiber plating to it. And in terms of actually installing it, it's a simple as pretty much just taking off one portion of the compression fitting, screwing it in. Once you've gone ahead and screwed it in, all you're going to need to do is go ahead and attach your hose. Uh, make sure to, of course, thread the actual cap for the compression fitting through beforehand. And then from there, go ahead and uh, get it screwed and dialed in. Now, if we go ahead and pan over to our system, we're going to actually see that we've actually already gone ahead and installed uh, the actual Poseidon into our little demo system that we have right here, along with uh, some compression fittings and uh, along with the tubing. So this was just done very quickly. It's not, of course, traditional of what a normal system would look like. And um, in most systems, you'll even be able to probably have this even look nicer. But for the quick purposes of being able to show you how simple it is, literally all you would need to do was just make those couple of connections and integrate that into your pump reservoir and radiator and you're going to be good to go. Now one nice thing that we do want to note though is that there's an automatic kind of redundancy or fail safe built into the Poseidon's design. Now for some of you guys that always worry about if the water cooling doesn't essentially work the way that it's intended to, the card could be operating under extremely high temperatures if the actual connections aren't made optimally. Uh, with the actual way that the Poseidon works, the active cooling solution will still work, meaning that these fans will actually still distribute air over the actual finned heatsink assembly that's inside of the card, keeping the card actually cool and operating even if the water cooling is not optimally working. Now, of course, if the water cooling is optimally working, it will work in conjunction with the actual vapor chamber cold plate in itself to be able to give you even better temperature performance. So with that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the temperature performance. Okay guys, so in terms of temperature performance, there was a significant reduction. Now, overall under gaming load, we actually saw that the temperatures were consistently between about 45 to about 47 C. So that's a huge drop in terms of what we have compared to air temperatures. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. Okay guys, so wrapping things up. 
We've just shown you a quick demonstration of how the Poseidon works not only under air cooling performance, but also how it performs under water cooling. As you can see, that under both situations, actually the card is operating cool and quietly and is giving you a great level of performance. But for you guys that are looking to eventually evolve into water cooling and be able to take things even further when it comes to better temperature performance and better overclocking, the Poseidon truly is a very simplified solution without compromising on the performance that water cooling has to offer. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, I'd love to see them here on the page and feel free to go ahead and drop them into the comments section. Also, you can find out more information by checking out the ASUS PCDIY website, that's pcdiy.asus.com, as well as check out our corresponding PCDIY YouTube channel as well. So as always, thanks for checking out the video and make sure to like and subscribe.